Hi, this is Paul with a tutorial on Octane Render for Nuke and the new HDR Light Studio 5.3 area lights. So I'm going to start off by um, getting a, a model into an Orbix format or OCS format which we can then use in the Nuke plugin. So I've just taken the Moto Ray Gun from the samples and for this I will uh, remove the stand and remove the studio. Um, and then I haven't actually done any other tweaks in this case and then I'll just open the viewport. In order to export the scene um, we need to uh, have the viewport open. Uh, I'll just, just make sure of a couple of settings here so um, for example I might set it to uh, direct lighting just to speed things up a little and uh, I'll just set the imager settings so in the image uh, uh, I'll set vignetting to 0, gamma to 2.2 and uh, linear response. Everything else looks right. So once it's in that format we can just click the export and we'll export to Raygun. So you can export to OCS or Orbex. Uh, Orbex is one file that contains all the materials, textures, geometry, octane information, cameras, everything. And OCS is uh, a format where um, it keeps the geometry and the textures in an assets folder. So instead of being one file, it will be many. Um, but you can choose either one in this particular case. So now we move across to Nuke. I've got a blank, a new Nuke scene here. I've got two viewers, viewer 1 is in 2D and viewer 2 is in 3D. I've added an octane render node, just a blank node here. And I can load the, if I click the import octane scene, I can load the scene that we exported from octane standalone. So when this scene gets imported, it's, um, it's everything, the geometry, the materials, the environment, the render settings, etc. So uh, when I connect that to the viewer, you'll see that um, it immediately renders in exactly the same fashion that it was in, in Modo. Um, so I can edit that scene if I want to in the Node Graph Editor, which I won't worry about at the moment. Um, one of the cool things that you can do uh, in the plugin is it, at the moment this 3D um, this 3D view is uh, the, the camera is not synced to the octane scene as you can see so if um, so if we actually add a camera node then um, we can take the camera information from the octane scene and put it into the nuke node So I've got camera. Uh, so sorry, that slipped into 3D there. So we connect the camera to Octane Render. And then on the Octane Render node, we go down to the camera and copy to new camera and you'll see that camera then moved and now we can look through that camera and you can see we're looking uh, the camera is positioned as per the octane camera obviously there's no geometry in the scene at the moment we can actually get the geometry from the Orbex file into the 3D viewer um, it's not going to handle uh, a million odd polygons particularly well but to demonstrate how this is done uh, you go to import geometry and that will take all the geometry from the uh, OCS file that we have um, imported and it will load it uh, into the into the graph here get all that wired up correctly again so 
you can see here uh, you can see how the camera matches now so ha doing this on a large scene is probably going to be too heavy for nuke to handle unless you've got some uh, some serious hardware but uh, in this case only a million polygons works fine so what's in the in the 3d scene here is not actually um, going into the compositing pipeline it's really just as a as a reference point to us okay now it is time to light the scene so I have taken the geometry out because it was causing just uh, a little bit too much lag to uh, present it well um, yeah, over a million polygons in a nuke scene uh, just slows things down on, unless you've got very high-end hardware and I've just tweaked a couple of the materials here just to make the reflections uh, a bit more obvious so you can see uh, it's rendering at the moment so uh, once we're rendering we can go into Octane Render node and we can open HDR Light Studio so by opening HDR Light Studio uh, once it is open it gives us the standard geometry here and you can do light picking and um, set up area lights etc so the, the difference in the workflow that uh, we're demonstrating here is that um, within HDR Light Studio there is a new feature which will be in the next version um, and that is the frame buffer so when we click on the frame buffer view I'll just set that up to sRGB once we click on the frame buffer view we are getting Nuke is sending its frame buffer the Octane frame buffer to HDR Light Studio so you can see that this ray gun here is exactly the same as um, the one in Nuke here so if we change the background for example and make it much brighter ooh, that's a bit sudden <laughs> um, you'll see that uh, it changes it within Nuke here and that then gets sent back to HDR Light Studio so it's a direct link so this works really really nicely because you do not need to leave HDR Light Studio to add area lights um, Nuke is doing all the management of that for you so for example when we create a light um, I'll just make it kind of bright and I'll just light pick to, to position it here so this is a light that is on the canvas and obviously that is reflected back in Nuke but we can convert that light to an area light and once that area light I'll just sort of make it somewhat close to the camera and maybe a bit brighter so this area light is actually not in the canvas itself but is in the um, in the nuke scene as geometry so you can see when we go back to nuke here the plugin has automatically created an octane emitter material, a nuke, uh, a nuke card, and a transform. So all of this is done for you. So you don't really need need to do anything. Um, that's why we needed this scene node here was for the HDR Light Studio lights to get attached to. So that card, when we when we light pick in here, that card actually gets moved in the nuke scene. It's, a, it's not that obvious, you can't actually see it in here um, but uh, you can see the uh, the outcome of that so you can uh, adjust the size of the card so you can make it uh, really narrow or really wide um, so that's a reasonably small card now and you can change its color I'll just set that a little bit bigger you can set the color to green for example um, and you can move it you can move it anywhere you can actually do um, a rim light pick as well so if we pick right here the light will appear 
um, well you can see it's actually behind the ray gun because it's shining through there but uh, if we pick here and then make it a bit bigger it might make it more obvious Ah, we can't see it because camera visibility is off. If we tick camera visibility, you can see it. Uh, you can see it back there. Let's make that a bit smaller. Okay, so you can see you can see the light there. So the normal light picking that you can do from here, reflection, illumination, and rim lighting is all there. So let's just get that back there. So we could add another light, for example, a, a rectangular light. And again, I'll make it an area light, make it a bit brighter. And light pick there, so it's above. Um, and again, you'll see that HDR Light Studio has added that second light. And you can also add picture lights. So picture light I'll assign an image to. So I've just got this uh, image there. And when we light pick, you'll see, it's a little bit hard to tell on that, maybe it's better if I do it there. You'll see that that uh, image is being used as the emission. It's not particularly that obvious, but. Um, so you can turn all these, so if we turn, turn all of these off, you'll see that they get turned off in Nuke. Um, actually, the link between, what's happening there is the link between the emitter and the transform is disconnected, and then we can turn them back on if needed. Um, when we save the Nuke project, it saves the HDR Light Studio project in with it. So when you next fire up Nuke and open that scene and open up HDR Light Studio, you'll get all the lights that you've already set up and, and all the attributes for them. So this is a pretty cool way of um, uh, lighting the scene, we, we think. Um, hope everyone's going to be pretty excited about it. Um, I'm not a lighting expert, so I have presented the... Uh, the technical workflow rather than the artistic workflow and I'm sure that uh, um, more proficient people will do some pretty stunning work with this. So we are looking for people um, to beta test um, so if you're interested please contact me. Um, thanks for watching and I hope it's been useful.